Hey everyone, it's Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to my intro to Twine series. At long last, we've come to the end of the road and the series is now complete. This is going to be the final episode and I just wanted to leave off with some conclus concluding remarks and as well as give you an idea about where, where I'll be going in the future in regards to Twine. But first, I'm, I'm hoping that each of you have gone through this series and have tried all the various techniques and tools I showed you in regards to Twine in the Harlow story format. As you may, as you may tell, Harlow can be somewhat easy, but it can also go somewhat deep and somewhat technical. It's really up to you how you want to approach. But the thing to keep in mind is that we're using this to tell stories. And, we're, and in such ways, your technology and the tools that you use should be subservient to the needs of the actual reader. So if you find yourself going too deep, you may, you may want to uh, take a break and reassess about what your actual intentions are. Now, if you've gone through this series and you've been dabbling here, dabbling there, it's time to stop learning and then start working on your stories. Just start putting this stuff into practice. The more you do that, the better you'll become at it and the more skilled you'll be at it. And that way, when new features come out with Harlow, you'll be able to integrate them directly into your stories. Typically, when learning a new skill or a new language or what have you, I approach it in three different ways. One is I learn, I study, I watch video tutorials, I read books, and so forth. Once I've done that, I then put it into practice. I just start practicing what I've learned and start observing my mistakes because the mistakes I make are key to understanding some of the material. Whenever you do make a mistake, and whether it's simple or complex, don't beat yourself over the head with it. Just use it as a learning opportunity to get better. And always understand that everyone is also making these kinds of mistakes. So you shouldn't be ashamed of anything or any errors that you make. Finally, I think it's it really helps to teach people what you've learned. And the way the way to do that is to head over to the Twine forum. Go here to the forum and then just read what other people are needing help with. Look at those questions, read up on them, and if you're able to answer them, by all means answer them if you can. But if not, you can actually see what you can see what other problems people are having, and this may sort of stir the pot and help you get a better understanding of the material in general. Once you've gone through this enough times, you've iterated, you've created some stories, you've answered questions, I think you will be at the point where you won't need this sort of series. And the best place to look for information is the documentation itself. The Harlow documentation here is where I've gotten everything I've learned about the actual, this actual series. I've just gone in and found things that I found somewhat interesting. There's a lot of things I didn't cover too. For instance, the twine markup and block syntax and all this stuff here. But a lot of the things that were very important, I did cover. And once you know how to do something once, you'll be able to go into twine again, go into other new things that may not be familiar to you. And based on how you used previous operations, you'll be able to apply it as well. And as always, if you have questions, you should always ask the developer. If you know any languages, of course, you can go into the GitHub repository and then play around. The thing, the thing to keep in mind is that you should experiment. Always keep on trying to expand your knowledge so that you can grow in skill. With that said, the big question is, what happens now? Well, at this point, you've learned how to tell a story. And you're using the basic Harlow format. But the more stories you produce in Harlow, and the more stories other people produce in Harlow, people ultimately are going to see that as a default story format. They're going to say, oh, this is Twine, but they haven't really given me anything else. Because as much as we want our stories to be the focal point, we also have to deal with the presentation. We have to deal with how the player is interacting with our story, and we need to give it something more than what Harlow just gives us. To do that, we now need to develop, we now need to tread into development territory. And that's where we're going next. The next 
I'll, I'll be starting the next series is going to be one focused primarily on HTML. In fact, we'll be working on HTML5. I'll be showing you the specifics of how you can under the specifics of HTML5, how you can build documents in HTML5. I'll be showing you all the various attributes that you can use and ultimately how you can style things just in HTML. HTML is critical to working in Twine because Twine parses your HTML and ultimately shows your story. By learning how by learning how to use HTML, you'll be you'll be expanding your skills as a developer. But here's the thing, I'm not going to be approaching this course specifically for HTML alone. Although you will be able to use a lot of the things I teach you for for other purposes, but I will be making this specifically for Twine. In fact, I think I'm calling it HTML for Twine developers. I know some of you are interested in learning other things like CSS and JavaScript, but HTML is the base. You need to learn that and understand that in order to use CSS because CSS specifically targets HTML. And then you need to know CSS and JavaScript to really, I mean, CSS and HTML to really use JavaScript because JavaScript will interact with both HTML and CSS to create dynamic effects as well. That's where we're ultimately going. I believe the HTML for Twine series isn't going to be a long series, maybe 10 episodes or something like that. And then I'll follow up with a CSS series and I'll show you how you can work with CSS in these formats inside of Twine itself. At long last, after we finish the CSS portion, we'll work specifically on JavaScript. JavaScript is probably going to be a large series where I'll show you how you can approach the language from a beginner's perspective. I'll show you how you, you can ultimately start coding and integrating JavaScript into your own stories. Once you have JavaScript in Twine, the sky is the limit. And then we'll pick up covering the other story formats as well. So there's a lot to cover. There's a lot to do. This isn't right now while we're ending the intro to Twine series. We're not ending, we're not ending the story arc. Think of this as the end of a book. We're going to start up another book soon. And I'm looking forward to going on this journey with you. Again, I want to thank you all for watching these videos, for comments, for commenting to me, for liking them, uh, for spreading them around. I really appreciate that. It's been really helpful and gratifying to help you all because as I've been helping you all, I've also been learning a ton about Twine myself. As always, if you have any questions, send them my way. And if you have any stories you'd like to share, send them my way as well. And that way we can share them to the community also. If you're interested in following me on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter. At my Twitter name is Zombie Treats. And also, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, feel free and you'll be notified when new Twine videos are made. I also, my channel also is primarily focused on game let's plays and things like that. But if you're not interested in that, you can just ignore those. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next series. Take care.